few months ago we saw what are microservices observability what are the key pillars and we also saw how you can leverage grafana linkerd and all different monitoring tools to keep track of your microservices in this video we are going to take a look at what are golden signals according to google based on their sre handbook the agenda is straightforward we are going to look at what are golden signals i'll also overlay a microservices architecture with how you can leverage these golden signals to in monitoring your customer facing system finally i'll show a linkerd demo i have minikube set up in my laptop with some applications running we can look at linkerd and see what are the different golden signals which we can monitor from it via grafana let's get started press the bell icon on the youtube app and never miss any update from tech primers this is a famous quote by the cto of amazon web services so he claims everything fails all the time so in order to overcome failure we need to make sure how quickly can we identify these failures and react to them one thing is to act upon in an automated fashion via self healing applications the other thing is to monitor our application to identify what's happening within our application this is why monitoring is a key tool set which you require to provide quality service to your customers so what are these golden signals according to google if you want to monitor only four key metrics within your application you should monitor only these four latency traffic errors and saturation so latency is the time a service takes in order to complete its round trip so these latencies could be identified due to error status codes or due to higher response times the next one is the traffic the traffic signifies how much demand your application is going through so this is nothing but throughput or your transactions per second we call it so these could be the number of requests which are coming in to the system if you are exposing apis or these could be the network um input output operations and concurrent sessions and things like that so traffic denotes all these factors which can cater to how much demand your application is going through at a particular point in time the next one is errors errors are the rate of request which fail either explicitly using http 500s or 400s and things like that or it could be implicitly having success response but then you have a wrong context where you had set your timeout as let's say 3 seconds and your response took more than 5 seconds so maybe you are failing your request because it exceeded that particular time period so errors could be either successful responses which exceeded the time frame or the latency or your timeout or it could be the 500s and 400s from your http response and finally saturation so saturation is how full your service is so this signifies how much memory your application is using how much cpu utilization your application is going through etc we all use all these four signals in day to day life but we don't know that these are key signals which we require if you want to just monitor only four metrics from your application using these four metrics you can identify the state of your application in order to create a better customer experience now let's overlay this with real time examples i've just created a dummy microservices implementation so imagine these boxes are individual services and our client is going to interact with these applications there are going to be different network calls between these microservices and there is a database as well so this is a classic example of a distributed system with multiple network calls going through now i am going to overlay all the golden signals into this particular architecture the first one is latency how can i monitor latency between my calls so i need a metric around how much time my individual rest call or maybe whatever network calls are going through within our application are responded with for example here let's say my first request from the user took 11 seconds and then there are calls between the microservices which are like 200 milliseconds and 100 milliseconds however there is a stress signal if you notice the database transaction is taking 10 seconds which is adding up to the latency which is going to 11 seconds for the consumer however the microservices are catering to only like 100 or 200 milliseconds so i can easily identify where is my latency within my network call so that is where latency is going to help us within this architecture 
The next one is the traffic. Traffic signifies the transactions per second. So this signifies how much transactions per second are flowing to within my system and which microservice is hitting what. So for example, here my total transaction per second could be 100 and out of which 10 TPS is hit by the service which is below and there are the remaining like 90 TPS is going through a different server. So I can easily identify how much traffic is going through which path using this traffic metric. The next one is errors. If let's say one of the services is down, I'm going to get like 404 or 500 response in the UI. I can easily identify what's happening within the system using errors and how those are impacted within my distributed system. So that's where error metric is going to help us. So these errors could be third party calls or calls within your application here. I'm just showing a call within the application, but it could be third party calls or it could be slow error rates, which has timed out within the application. Let's say, for example, the 10 seconds, whatever we saw, if we had a timeout of five seconds there, then it could result in errors as well. The next metric is saturation. So saturation signifies how much memory each of my application is at a particular point in time. So for example, here, each of my microservices are having a different memory and CPU utilization using which I can identify what's happening and what are the symptoms that this particular process could go down or it could be recovering. So I can easily identify issues which can happen based on a threshold. So if let's say my CPU uh, utilization exceeds like 80 percentage, then I want to have an alert so that I can spin up new instance or if my memory threshold is reaching a particular point in time, I need to scale that and then have another instance so that I can load balance my request. So I can monitor my application based on all these metrics. So these all are called as golden signals and they primarily help us in monitoring our application and making it better for customers so that you can serve them well. Obviously, all these metrics are used by us day in, day out. But how does it play real time? So I have a demo which I can show here. I have a Minikube cluster running in my laptop right now. I have one application which is called Spring Cloud Sleuth. Within that, I have two containers, one called the client and one called the ser uh, server. If you had seen my microservices observability demo video, it's the same uh, code which I'm using here. I have a server and client. The server is going to call the, um, the client is going to call the server within the same pod. I have two containers running. If you see here, I have like three slash three. This is nothing but three uh, sidecars are running within this particular pod. Uh, the Two of them are my code. The other one is the Linkerd um, service mesh sidecar. Linkerd is a service mesh. If you don't know what is Linkerd, again, you can check my Linkerd video and I have a hands on on that as well. So I have set up the same um, in my uh, Minikube setup here. I have only one application, but I have three instances of it running, right? So all these are getting hit. I have a curl which is just running and hitting uh, my endpoint, which is this. I have this hello world endpoint which is hitting these client and the client internally calls the server, right? So all these requests are happening and you can see that I can monitor my application state using Linkerd. So Linkerd provides a dashboard uh, um, via Grafana. So if I go to Linkerd dashboard, this is the Linkerd da dashboard. I can look at my application from here and I can navigate to my Grafana dashboard based on my pod level metric or I can do what my application as a whole. Right now, right now, if you look at it, all the uh, rates are successful and uh, I'll, let's walk through the golden signals, right? So the first golden signal is latency. So latency is by default mentioned here if you look at it in the Grafana dashboard. So using this particular la latency widget, I can identify what's happening and how much time my microservices are taking. For example, here, if you look at it, some of my requests are taking like um, uh, almost like 20 millisecond and then some of them are like completing within like 5 milliseconds so the average is almost like 12-13 uh, milliseconds right so this is what is the metric around latency the next one is traffic so traffic signifies how much transactions per second I'm able to process so for example here right now there are like on an average uh, there are like three to four requests per second so this is because I have been generating traffic artificially so i have a curl which is just running i have two curls which are running so let me open new tab and then i will increase the request rate so that is going to increase this particular metric so i'm just doubling or i'm just increasing the uh, number of requests let me open one more tab and then i will just double the number of requests So 
so this is going to add more traffic into my system uh, also notice here i have my monitoring enabled for one minute i am going to change it to five seconds so that i can get frequent updates into this dashboard so i made it as five seconds so i should be able to see more see see that the request per second has increased this is because i increased the number of requests which are coming in so this is the second metrics which we are talking about in the golden signal which is the traffic so i can now identify how much requests are coming into my system at a particular point in time so this is request per second so i'm getting like almost seven requests per second the next metric is the error rate if you look at it, I don't have any error as such, but there is something called success rate. So using success rate, obviously you are going to derive at an error rate. Uh, for the sake of a demo, I have a rogue deployment, which I'm going to do now, where I'm going to deploy my application, which is going to introduce more uh, issues within the application. So let's try doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy a new version of my application, which I already have here. I'm just going to apply that particular deployment. Uh, this is just doing a kubectl apply within that i'm just using a different version of the container and you can see that my container uh, deployment is happening new containers are getting created so slowly my deployment is going to roll out because i have a rollout strategy uh, which is going to deploy only one container at a time i'm going to re-inject my linkerd configuration by doing linkerd injection so this will inject my linkerd setting it will retain my linkerd setting uh, now what's going to happen is this should create new set of um, deployments for us i believe so it should take a while because our deployment is going to do rolling update again and it's going to take so let's wait for a few seconds and once all my applications are up or all my pods are up i will see what's happening within my dashboard notice that my success rate is going down this is because i introduced a endpoint which can fail randomly right now i can i can see that the success rate is going down due to the success rate going down my requests are also going down the requests per seconds are going down my latency might not be impacted because these are genuine errors because i don't have any latency based timeout using all these metrics you can identify these issues and i'm showing you real time obviously the last one is the saturation saturation is not visible in this particular dashboard because it's not by default created in the grafana dashboard however you can use grafana to create saturation metrics because already these metrics are collected by the linkerd uh, service mesh we're just not seeing it so i can go to the explore option and i can look at my metrics because i'm plugged into Gra prometheus right so grafana plugs into prometheus so i'm saying explore prometheus and i want to see some specific metrics from the container and i want to see my cpu load right i mean if you look at it i can get this metric right now i'm just selecting uh, container cpu load average of 10 seconds so it just shows how much load my container um, CPU is getting. So I can also select other metrics like, for example, usage seconds in total, how much I'm getting, etc. So these are different saturation level metrics which I can configure in the dashboard. I'm not going to show that in this video, but if you look at a Grafana based dashboard setup video in generally in YouTube, you can definitely take a look up and configure your dashboard. But Grafana provides all these metrics which Prometheus gives it to. So that's all I wanted to show. I'll just summarize what we discussed. Golden signals are four different key metrics which you can leverage to monitor your application efficiently. The first one being latency, using which you can identify what's slowing down your system. The next one is traffic, using which you can identify the transactions per second your system is processing currently. The third one is the errors. Using errors, you can identify if there is any fault within your system or your first system is timing out. And finally, with saturation, you can identify if there are going to be any errors which can happen in the near future based on your saturation limit for your application using metrics like CPU utilization and memory. These are the key golden signals which, according to Google, can help you in monitor your application and give you the best results in monitoring these distributed systems. I hope you were able to understand what are golden signals and, and also how do they relate to in real time. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.